All right, gonna just do a fun video today. Um, hope you guys are excited because I talked about the tier list. Well, here it is. And I will be covering most everybody that I've actually at least covered in depth. There's people here that you'll see that I'm not gonna put on the tier list yet because I'd like to actually cover them more in depth first. I, of course, have ideas on where the characters would actually go to, but I don't wanna just go off of ideas of where they would be. Um, in terms of like, I've calved these people versus this feels right based on my scaling. I don't want to do that, so I will put, I will adjust and edit this um, tier list, essentially be updating it as we go along as a channel, and it should be really fun. So let's get into it. And right off the bat, from the very beginning, you'll see that this tier list goes from street to large building all the way up to multi universal and beyond. And right at the bottom here he is we actually have goki at the very bottom and he goes right at the very bottom so street to large building level yeah goki is within street to large building you have to understand that he is pretty strong within this tier uh kind of so right he's not large building or anything but we broke down that the potency of his grip alone just his grip not his punch or anything is coming out to wall level the reason why that was very very impressive is because that was all broken down into a single cubic centimeter meaning when you actually apply all of the force across his hand at once assuming he can grab somebody entirely yeah he's coming you know to the higher ends of like wall level he is in terms of a street fighting like street level character for fighting he is much above that capable of course snapping trees in half with a single grab or grip strength um, shattering them of course too, knocking them through them everything with just simple punches his skin is so hard that he couldn't be hurt by full-on tree trunks and uh, knives or anything like that and he can eat souls too a uh, large big man at the height of E class at the lowest of D class one of those two and that is Goki from Yu Hakusho um, now let's see let's just go in order from you know what? actually I'm gonna go from bottom and then all the way top and work my way down never mind now I'm gonna go from all the way to the bottom work my way up so let's see city block to small city level I don't think anybody else would be here uh, city block to small city um, let's see uh, Suzaku would be it you could ignore <laughs> you can ignore uh, Rolf the highest tier in that series, right? Um, Suzaku, we'll put Suzaku there, city block to small city. And everybody else should scale above that, at least for people I've covered. Um, they have Tikimiki twice. Um, okay, so city block to small city. We have Suzaku and that's another Yu Hakusho person. We have uh, C-Class Suzaku. If you want to say he's C-Class, based on authors as, um, himself, I've covered this before. Hiei firing off a Dragon of the Darkness Flame and Zeru scales comfortably above Suzaku with beats and everything there going, especially with the scaling and how Yusuke, of course, had trained and gotten so much stronger after Suzaku. Yada, yada, yada. Hiei was referenced as still D-Class, not even high D-Class. Um, if that's the case, Suzaku is still but a D-class demon. But scaling-wise, in general, without the um, author statement, uh, he feels very low in C-class. That said, Suzaku, yes, he scales way above Byako, who already is large building level, just in you know his ability to vaporize basalt rock and to the degree that he can with an attack as small as it is. Now we have Suzaku, who is so vastly above him. I mean, Seryu, Hiei are already one-shot people above Byako. Seryu being able to one-shot Byako, Hiei being able to casually one-shot Seryu. Suzaku, of course, scaling either equal to Hiei or potentially even above him at that point in time. Definitely through hacks, but we are getting to that city block, small city level. Again, also with all of this lightning and some of the feats we've gotten for that, across with also with Yusuke's spirit gun at the time. Next up, we have, where do we have, let's see, city to small island. So with 
people stronger than Suzaku, and we're looking at a full-on city to small island amounts. We're going to go with that honestly fits in Inuyasha pretty well with what we were talking about. Those who uh, had seen my last Inuyasha video, you know exactly why I'm placing him here. Um, likewise, that also has Sashomaru above him. And I would say past that, let's go down the list. Um, these people are casually way above city to small island in potency, at least the people I've covered again. Um, Baragon would probably fit here. Um, small Island, when we talk about uh, Okiora and the scaling and everything there, the second release, that does seem to be exactly where I have him. I haven't really covered him, but he already is scaling against people that I've covered enough that I feel comfortable with at least placing Baragon. And I do believe I would have him between city to small island with his AP and attacks. Of course, he's a very strong hacks character. Um, but in terms of AP, that is what this tier list is about. Aside from Baragon, is there anyone else? And of course, those watching, make some guesses as I'm going through. Where do you think each person belongs? Especially if you think that the tier list would be flowing in a different way. Um, they already, let's see, Taguro would be above this, um, all of the Ichigo and Naruto people are way above this, um, Dragon Ball is way above it, uh, shoot, actually it might be Bui, um, in terms of raw EP, so he scales Bui's gonna be up there. Where should I be putting Bui uh, as compared to these people? So he could handle an entire Dragon of the Darkness Flame, but gets one shot by a Dragon Absorbed Punch. So he can handle a full Dragon of the Darkness Flame uh, from B Class PA. Scales probably to just over 80% Taguro. And given with how we did Inuyasha Sashomaru, hmm. I might consider Bui about here, or potentially right after Sashomaru. That's a tough one though, once we're getting so close into things. Um, wow, yeah. I'll leave it there for now. I think, you know what? No, I can't. I don't think that even Sashomaru because the meadow, of course, is a lot of power, but it's hack space. I don't think, however, that they, with any of their moves, could overpower what Bui does with just his aura. Baragon, he's so much hacks. I think I'm just scaling them there. Scaling, rather scaling him to this point based on other characters rather than any of his actual moves feats-wise. But feats and scaling, of course, matter. I think I'm just scaling him there. Is there any reason I should even have him above Inuyasha and Sashomaru? other than just scaling. He at least, hmm. You know what? This can be updated if needed. I think off of feats, I'm gonna have that be the case. I think that does bring Bui to the forefront of his feet outright tanking and sending back a full Dragon of the Darkness Flame. Um, and we'll go from there. Though I do inherently believe, I suppose by headcanon, that Baragon should be scaling above Sashomaru in AP. He just, is requiring nothing but scaling to get there and that's going to be hard for me to place it right now so going on i don't think there's anybody else in small island level um Bui was the last one i found and if we get to island to small country uh based on everybody i've already gone through i think that's where we're getting to taguro for sure He's talking about Bui. um of course he doesn't get into a small country but he definitely scales above base island um being able to scale vastly above Yusuke, who, I mean, got multiple amps. He, of course, sent him through the entire island with a casual spear gun while cuffed. But then, after that, just simply powering up to 50% of his true power, 100% false, of course, 100% um, of his false power or whatever, uh, when he was lying, he was able to then 
block his full powered punches with just, you know, his thumb, yell away an even stronger spirit gun, and then he had to go massive amp from there, yada yada yada. We've seen the scaling, we've seen the feats. Taguro is a monster. As for anybody else who falls within island to small country, see this is probably where I would be placing um, Okiora and such um, at best in terms of like on the island side. Um, possibly, honestly, towards the height of small island, it's a tough call there. I'd, I haven't bothered with um, Okiora as much as a lot of other people have because I try to stick with like the height of each series is power at given points, and Okiora is not the height anymore at that point. I was going for like Dongai Ichigo, right? Uh, in my Dongai Ichigo and Shikai Kenpachi. Uh, Shikai Kenpachi purely because of the meteor feet. Speaking of which, where would Shikai Kenpachi go? Um, yeah, he was easily up in. Let's see. I would have him. Right. Shikai Kenpachi, island to small country. He would be above Taguro for sure, actually. He didn't make it to country. His AP was broken down to a cubic centimeter. And that got down to, that was island level, but on a pretty high scale. Um, you know, or got to like, yeah, large island level rather. Um, he, you know what? I, I'll leave him in front of Taguro, but that might not be right in terms of pure AP, but we'll go from there. To be fair, actually, I should be trying to go off their full power in these forms anyways. I know this is a feat where he, you know, went Shikai, but he still had his eye patch on. He's certainly stronger than uh, Taguro, actually. Um, let's see. And if he's there, then that would be about where Dangai Ichigo would be. Um, so I, I don't want to do too many forms, but this is where we'll be doing for now. And this is also where Monster Aizen would be casually going. Um, I would honestly even put him below uh, Shikai Kenpachi. But they're, they all should be above Taguro, with Monster Aizen getting the closest. And... Going from there, let's keep going. Um, country to continental. Um, well, country, let's see. So we're seeing if country is the lowest end. Is there anybody else in islands to small country? Um, let's see. I don't believe so. I think everybody else at their height is scaling above this point. I can go back if I needed. All right. We are now in country to continental, and from here, I think we're, let's see, the closest person we have is Bon. Yeah, so, and not to know Taizai, uh, I have a video covering some of where they scale. You can see why I have them into at least country. I don't think they even get close to continental, but they do at least get into country level. Bon being someone who got a massive super amp towards the end. I mean, crazy, like, stat-wise amp. All that would be going towards AP is with how he could fight the Demon King on his own, no less. Uh, very, very impressive. Uh, Bon is quite strong and deserves to be in this part of the tier list. Um, going from him, though, would he be above Escanor? Um, I would actually put Escanor above him. Um... Assuming it is Escanor when he's using his life force specifically. Otherwise, I would have him here. But Escanor, when he was literally, I'm willing to die, uh, he seemed to be able to output more power than even Bon when they were all fighting together um, against the Dim King when he'd gotten even more serious and stronger. Is this going to be the one where I put all the Nanatsu no Taizai people? I believe it might be. Um, so after Escanor would be Meliodas, and he's quite a bit stronger in his full thing, but this is country to continental. He is not getting um, so much that he's getting up to multi-continental to move. Um, Meliodas definitely belongs there. And you know what? Actually, up to continental. Okay, so yeah, speaking of continental, that would be where we are getting some Naruto. 
Um, and in fact, this is the biggest letdown transformation ever. I was really hoping to, you know, something I could be really hyped about. Um, you know how I feel about the statements that aren't back. So saying like, oh, each key is like, he is, you know, solar system level of it. No, stop. In terms of actual feats and scaling, this is where they lie and the transformation makes him stronger, sure, but not by anything crazy as we could tell with how he actually fights. Um, I mean, his attacks weren't hardly even hurting Ishiki, rather just cutting out his amount of time he had left was the real threat, not his actual AP. I'm not even sure his AP even, like, <laughs> got any higher. Um, but yeah, so here we are. Um, moving on from Naruto, he might end up being the strongest with this. I would say Kaguya. You know what? Um, I would honestly, I'd probably put Kaguya there in terms of AP because again the life force part of Baron, Baron mode would this is not a speed thing Baron mode would speed blitz Kaguya no problem but in terms of AP um Kaguya's uh attacks were way stronger than like what Sasuke Susanoo at the time could do or anything like that and I suppose adult Naruto could be matched yeah just this would be the case here I suppose he could still put up more AP than Kaguya could it's just that I don't think the transformation in of itself is adding that much AP. This feels right. Um, additionally, yeah, then we would have the strongest version of versions of the uh, Bleach cast. So let's go with Kenpachi here. Now, Kenpachi in Bankai was so vastly above his eye patch Shikai form. And. In terms of Baryan, Naruto, Kaguya, like the continental levels of range of like AP, that's essentially where I have the um, Bleach cast. I do believe that they are still slightly above, however, I'm... Huh, to be honest, it was specifically an Ichigo thing. I think that Kenpachi is like of the hardest hitting people in Bleach for obvious reasons. Um, Aizen, in terms of pure AP, I would probably put here, below Baryan Naruto. Um, though he has all of his host of other hacks and crazy powers, just in pure AP, however, he might fall behind adult uh, Naruto. And then, of course, we would have Ichigo. Now, I had talked about, you know, like, true Shikai Ichigo, Horn of Salvation, but his true Bankai is easily above everybody else I shouldn't say easily Kenpachi could really give him a run for his money right like in terms of the singular strikes uh, man we didn't get to see his full power like really go we didn't get to see his limits so by feats I'll give it to Ichigo but given how it's set up narratively on top of feats and scaling and everything Bankai, uh, Bankai um, Kenpachi quite up there but Ichigo yeah I think he takes it um, in terms of being the strongest in this tier. Is there anybody else that goes from country to continental? Um, let's see. Since we would be one above that, you know what, let me just, eh, I'll talk about each one. Um, country to continental. You know what, Aladdin. So Aladdin would also fall within here but i'll bring him up probably last because there is one tidbit i want to answer about that where i got a part of my video covering his scaling wrong but i'm not sure it actually affects the ap at all i had to talk about it but there was nothing that actually substantiated that his ap had risen rather than just his existence in terms of like his function of existing um i'll cover that last so Aladdin could be within this tier as well. Now, if I'm not covering Aladdin, I think I'm moving on. Yes, um, oh wait, Luffy, ah, yes, Luffy. I haven't covered him on my channel yet. I'd like to make an actual calcs with him first before updating it. I do plan on doing some One Piece scaling. Um, okay, in that case, easy one. We're going into the multi-continental to moon levels. And that is bringing us up to 
Sensui. And Sensui is easily into the multi-continental at the lowest low ball moon um, levels of AP with him actually using like his, uh, not just a punch, but rather his full special attacks, full power, not holding back. Golden offensive armor, you can see it in the picture. This looks pretty right with uh, right where Sensui, right where Sensui would be. Um, is there anyone else in this league though? Take a look at the pictures. I don't believe there is. If not, we'll just go uh, back. And so we'll jump into small planet to planetary and right off the bat, that's another you have show. I already, I've pretty much learned where people are now. Um, yes, full power Yoko Kurama easily fits into this tier. And small planet to planet. Um, I think everybody remaining is probably too strong for that. Um, at least for people I'm trying to cover or I've already skilled. And we are now going to jump into large planet and that's where we're probably hitting mostly you show people left now um so for large planetary that's of course going to be like he that's going to be you know full power use k full power he um this is still they're just at like the lower ends of like large planet going all the way to dwarf star ryzen definitely fits here um scary having ryzen and use k or he in the same here <laughs> uh, to show just how big of a gap each of these can be. Um, note that this is not Ryzen Prime uh, because again he's very hypothetical, I don't care about scaling him. After that we don't have too many more people, a lot of these people I haven't covered yet. Um, and so I think, let's see, small star to large star, I think we'll just go by the characters now. So Cell is quite obviously in solar system to galaxy, not because of a statement, but because of the feats within the series and the scaling that goes along with it. Uh, again, of course I'm doing it by feats and scaling. Um, it's not merely his statement. I, again, don't take statements without the actual feats. Um, and he does not have a feat for his statement. However, he has past feats of other characters that he is scaling from and just inherently how the scaling within the series actually works. Um, that's just scaling exists and it's a real thing. I don't care if you don't like it. So there's your super perfect cell, not merely cell, you know, not just normal perfect cell either. And from there, I think everybody else is pretty much covered. Um, oh, Goku. Goku. Goku would be there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much where Goku would be. <laughs> um... Is that everybody? Let's see. I'll talk about Aladdin in a bit. I don't think I've talked about anybody else yet in terms of like calcing them. Roth of course belongs in the top. Um, okay, so Aladdin. Now I could easily have Aladdin anywhere from about here, right? You could be in this area here up to like I would need more, yeah, he'd be in the and beyond part. And here's what's happening with Aladdin. There we go. Aladdin. Now, in my video, everything I said about him was, I still say, is as true. Except at the very end, you can watch that video again, and you would see that I talked about how, um, essentially, nothing necessitates that when they came out of the, um, um, I'm doing this in real time, so forgive me if I forget names and everything, but essentially where Ugo had existed, where it was like a fifth dimensional existence of like, where essentially uh, within the series of Magi, all the people, all the gods, of course, um, were beating each other in hierarchy. I can't believe I forgot the name of it, but it's where Aladdin was born, yada, yada, yada. Their existences were certainly triumphing over each other, and I was fine saying that, say, like, God Sinbad, um, God David, were way above anybody here, including, um, Goku and such. But I wasn't comfortable saying Aladdin was. There was a lot of reasons why. However, when he one-shots God Sinbad form, it was when he was, like, in an amalgamation state outside of that realm, um, manifesting into, like, their normal realm, and still, like, fighting with, um, God Sinbad. 
I was like, I don't know if all of this equates to it. And plus, we never see Aladdin actually triumph over, like, he, we never see Aladdin actually go over other people in existence. Well, I did have a talk with somebody a long time ago, and I do actually agree with them on the at least basis that Aladdin, he does actually scale over God, um, David, in terms of, like, his existence and everything, and his ability to take him out and actually affect him. Because he actually, what I looked, what it looked like was he was still fighting with Sinbad, but actually it looked definitely by the end when he was killed by Aladdin that he um, had absorbed him. Secondly, I saw it looked like Ugo and everybody was helping him. That's not the case. I mean, go back in the video. If I need to talk more on this in a new video, I will, uh, so I can show you all the scans. But Aladdin here... Um, he did it by himself, actually. That was all him taking out Sinbad, or David, in one shot, yes. Now, the problem is the existence factor. Um, does your existence... Let's talk about, like, say these people are 4D. I know they're above 4D and such, but let's just say they're 4D. Or... I'll just make it even more whatever, alright. Let's say you have a 4D existing, like, being, okay? And he can freely control the aspects of what's happening in a 3D world. Does that mean that that person has infinitely more AP, however, than everybody in the 3D world? No, nothing necessitates that. Being able to control the aspects, um, such as the Rook in this specific example, doesn't mean that your attacks have to carry any amount of AP. A lot of times it'd be more so that you can hack through any given scenario causality or breaking such things or anything like that has nothing to do with AP and additionally you would see like all those attacks would just phase through them and you would be like yeah I exist above you well in that case is it it's not really your durability more so than you just existing over these levels of attacks but in that case couldn't Aladdin by virtue of it being an equal existence to these people simply have his lower end AP just be able to affect them it's not that they have crazy durability, but rather, you just need to be able to match them in a certain level of existence, or a certain level of power, however you want to define these things, before your attacks can affect them. And once your attacks can affect them, then it's not requiring, like, universal, multiversal levels of, a, you know, AP. To, so, that's my problem. Um, otherwise, I would have Aladdin right here, but you could easily scale him to here. Aladdin's weird, because he's right in between all the people that got into like crazy levels of hierarchy without ever doing any of that showings himself but then he has that one attack at the very end so that's where i put it i'm gonna leave aladdin off for now i'm gonna keep it casual actually with my video where i had him and i would say i have aladdin probably right above Bon himself and so yeah that was it with aladdin um i've now saved it and um downloaded it so I'll be able to share it and everything but this is it this is where I have everybody um, and I plan on updating this as I go I hope you enjoyed the video um, hopefully this didn't take too long <laughs> and yeah let me know what you think of the tier list and for those who might be new to the channel um, or disagree feel free to let me know why however note a lot of these characters have been covered extensively or in at least other past videos and you can see why I scale anybody to any given part or point so that they're it, they are where they are for reasons don't just come in and be like wow that was wrong like cool story bro I guess uh, because if that's all you've got then I guess I that's just gets dismissed right there's there's no argument to be had um, but I do love actual like point versus like he's he doesn't belong there because um but a lot of people who might come with a because has probably already been covered in my videos anyways i hope everybody has a nice day if you like the video like comment and subscribe always helps the channel and yeah i hope you guys are excited for each tier list update i you end up seeing this tier list a lot um because i'll probably be adding it to the end of every video as i update it with new characters and their scaling all right, everybody, uh, ciao.
Sister